Hi, this is Ahmed Alogaili and Manos Brilakis, presenting case 236 for the manual of CTO interventions. This is a case illustrating the challenges associated with PCI of a right coronary CTO going retrograde through an epicardial collateral. The patient was an elderly gentleman with previous bypass and occluded vein graft to the PDA, slightly reduced ejection fraction and dyspnea on exertion, which was considered to be his engine equivalent. He was referred for recanalizing the right coronary artery CTO. Dual injection showed an occlusion of the proximal right coronary that had significant calcification and a tapered entry, long occlusion length, there is a small segment of the distal RCA before the bifurcation of the PDA PLV and a large epicardial collateral coming from the obtuse marginal filling the distal vessel. So clear proximal cap tapered but long occlusion length. There is a bifurcation close to the distal cap and epicardial collateral given the risks associated with retrograde PCI through epicardial collaterals, especially in bypass patients that carry the risk of loculated effusions in case of collateral perforation, we decided to first try undergrade wiring, and if that failed, to then attempt retrograde through the epicardial collateral. Undergrade wiring was not successful. You see the wire here is not in the vessel architecture. So after multiple attempts, we decided to switch approach in this particular injection. Now we see a little better the anatomy, and actually there is some patent lumen in the middle right coronary artery. So we went retrograde. We used a, a, a microcatheter. This is a caravel. And uh, we see that there is significant tortuosity in the distal segment of the collateral. We try to cross retrograde using a SUO O3 guide wire, which is the guide wire of choice for epicardial collaterals, and we were able to successfully navigate through torsuosity, the secret being uh, gentle rotation and being patient because the wire may take some time, but then eventually it can release and follow the course of the vessel. And then uh, by doing an injection, we were able to visualize the distal vessel. So we are indeed into the right posterior lateral coming to the PDA. We then try to advance the SUO3 into the right uh, coronary artery distal and we were able to make some progress. We did uh, try to knuckle a Mongo wire retrogradely. However, the caravel microcatheter could not follow distally, and the caravel is not a very supportive uh, microcatheter. And here, we clearly have a lot of calcium and tortuosity, which makes it hard to advance uh, the knuckle uh, further up into the distal and mid RCA. So we decided to change the microcatheter. We inserted a Corsair Pro 150 centimeters. We can see here we have an AL1 and we have a guide extension. So the support is there, but it's not absolutely optimal. And then uh, when we're trying to get the Corsair further up, we lost everything. So the guide came out, the guide extension came out, and essentially now we have to start from scratch. This time we changed the guide to an AL2. And uh, I think this was probably the most important maneuver during this procedure. The AL2 provided much more support than the AL1, which was critical to navigate through this heavily calcified occlusion of the right coronary artery. So once again, we were able to navigate through the collateral and enter into the distal right coronary artery. And then uh, we used uh, a Mongo guide wire, and now with the stronger support, and we can see here that the AL2 goes deeply into the vein graft of the OM, and we also have a guide extension. We were able to advance the Mongo wire knuckled almost all the way to the ostium of the right coronary artery. So in this case, we are now trying to get an undergrade wire in the extra plug space and then do the reverse card, but we had a lot of difficulty advancing the wire into the extra plug space. So what to do? 
Um, we changed the guide to get a little more support. So similar to the retrograde guide, we used also an Amplats Left 2, which is um, more supportive than the Amplats 1. Again, a lot of difficulty engaging. We see we have a guide extension as well. But we were finally able to get some penetration, some advancement into the vessel. And then, given the poor support, we decided to use a so-called power knuckle technique. So we have two wires. We have a balloon over the first wire, and then uh, we inflate that balloon, and then we are trying to push a Mongo guide wire which knuckles and then seems to enter into the extra plug space. So now we have the two wires overlapping. We did balloon inflation here in the extra plug space and then tried various retrograde uh, maneuvers trying to get into the undergrade guide extension. And uh, again, multiple attempts. We can see the wires going initially outside, but then uh, it's knuckling again, going outside and then redirected. And then eventually it uh, finds its way after multiple trial and error inside the undergrade guide catheter. So this is a matter of persistence, trying again and again with uh, different uh, maneuvers until we try to get the wire in. And then after we got the wire in, we would not actually advance the microcatheter all the way into the guide extension because of the calcium. So we did the opposite. We actually inchwarmed the undergrade guide extension. We can see it here. Balloon is inflated, deflated, and now the guide extension is advancing further down, and we were able to get essentially all the way to the retrograde microcatheter. We then uh, were able to externalize an R350 guide wire, and now we have um, much more support. We decided to stand into the posterior lateral, so long stands essentially all the way to the ostium of the right coronary artery. And after we were done standing, we wanted to remove the retrograde equipment, but there's always the concern that we may have some uh, damage or perforation of the epicardial collateral. So one way to minimize any risks and facilitate treatment if needed is to advance microcatheter from both directions, so have an undergrade and the retrograde microcatheter, and then uh, remove the guide wire and then inject from both sides to make sure that we do not have uh, any perforation of the guide of the collateral and indeed there was no perforation of the collateral. A nice result was achieved, still some residual dissections but they were covered with a stand and good flow into the distal right coronary artery. What are the lessons from this case? The first one is the importance of support. Again, the most critical event probably in this case was to use these large guides going to AL2 for both the vein graft as well as the native right coronary artery. Having those larger Amplatz guides provided extra support and we also used the guide extension both in the undergrade as well as the retrograde direction. We did use short guides given the long length, which is especially important for epicardial collaterals that are often long. Then troubleshooting the extra plug space entry. We had a lot of difficulty getting into the extra plug space from the undergrade guide. And the way we solved the problem was by using the power knuckle technique and the base. So essentially we inflated the balloon, we trapped the microcatheter, and then we dissected with a polymer jacket wire into the mid RCA. We then did uh, insert the retrograde wire into the undergrade guide extension, but we could not get the retrograde microcatheter all the way there. So instead what we did is we inchwarmed the undergrade guide extension over the retrograde microcatheter, which allowed externalization. And finally, when using epicardial collaterals, it is important to screen them before removing the equipment for perforation. So if there is a problem, then we still have microcatheter access of the collateral and we can use coils or thrombin or other means to achieve hemostasis. Thank you.